In this video, we'd like to take a more free-handed approach. We'd like to shed light on something that we think really deserves some attention. That is what it will look like to suffer in the future. What does it look like to suffer in a postmodern world when all of our economic and environmental problems are hopefully solved? Our notion of suffering thus far has been tied to that of physical restriction. In an effort to alleviate the suffering, we have sought to lift people from the worst of these restrictions. We endeavored first to eliminate the practice of slavery in any sanctioned form. We then sought to lift populations from poverty, as we knew that poor economic opportunity led to a high degree of suffering. We then worked, and still work, to free people from discrimination and persecution based on race, religion, or any demographic affiliation. Let us take a look at what it means to suffer. We tend to view suffering through an old world lens. That is, that suffering occurs under the physical restrictions that exist under the systems which we tore down when we built our modern societies. People's suffering is often disregarded when we observe the circumstances of their lives to be free of these physical restrictions that cause us to suffer. For instance, there is a general tendency among us to view well-off individuals who are depressed, anxious, and unhappy as having a diluted view of pain and incapable of truly suffering under such privileged life circumstances. This seems to stem directly from our view that money and possessions free us from the very things that cause suffering in this world. The difficult battle of getting mainstream recognition and attention for mental health in America is a perfect example of this. This perspective fails to recognize how the mind actually comes to a conclusion which causes us to suffer under those physical circumstances. Suffering under oppression is only suffering because the mind perceives that it cannot express itself. We feel that our essence cannot be put into the world because of the physical shackles that restrict us. Under a physical oppressor, one is restricted from carrying out actions which it desires. And this is the true moment where suffering occurs. The actual perception of the restriction, not the restriction itself. Therefore, the mind is perfectly capable of suffering to an equal degree under self-tyranny as it is under external tyranny because if we sufficiently believe that we are restricted in our capacity to express ourselves, whether externally enforced or internally reasoned, we experience the same pain. Our belief in an external value or measuring stick can cause us to have a perception of restriction feeling as though we cannot present our true selves to the world because of a need to adhere to some external idea, is a form of self-tyranny, and can cause the same mental side effects as real-life restriction. Take for instance you want to move to a new town across the country. The weather is warmer, the people are nice, the food is good, and you're ready for something new. Yet you have been told from a young age that family sticks together, and that people who leave their hometown and their family behind are selfish, bad people. You believe that if you move, you will be committing a morally bad act, and you judge yourself poorly for even wanting to do it. You wish you could leave, but you can't leave, and you think you're a bad person for even considering it. You experience shame, anxiety, and depression. You cannot express an innate desire which comes from within. You cannot manifest that which is you because you adhere to an external idea that was handed to you from a young age and reinforced by those who want you to adhere to it. How different is this from having a restricted freedom of movement under an oppressive government? Peering into the postmodern world, I see no end to suffering as a result of our technological and economic progress. As is detailed in the previous section, pain and suffering, exclusive of specific physical acts which cause pain, is the result of an inability to manifest one's inner self onto the world. With the side effects of perceived restriction laid out as equally painful as physical restriction, we could begin to unravel what the future of suffering in a world largely freed from poverty and physical restriction looks like. Our striving for meaning is not suppressed by economic abundance because too many potential paths without any reliable internal compass to find the right one is no different than not having any options at all. If we are not adequately individualized, how can we navigate our way through a world of endless promises of meaning? Endless ads, lifestyle marketing, ideologies, and judgmental frameworks which work to suppress your uniqueness in favor of a mold. If you are born, live, and die without ever having located your path for self-expression, how is this any different than living your life being prevented from doing so? You will suffer just as greatly, yet only have yourself to blame. 
We have created a world filled with opportunity, as we so loudly proclaim. Yet we have given no one the tools to find their way. We do not offer our children assistance in knowing and valuing themselves over external social norms, and scold our adults for experiencing psychological pain in the face of perceived restriction on their self-expression. As a consequence of this friction, we experience from suffering at the hands of our own self-imposed restrictions in a world that tells us this is not real suffering, we develop a very specific and seemingly widespread condition. External denial of suffering causes us to self-harm psychologically. This in turn reinforces our dependency on external meaning because we begin to distrust ourselves. This can be likened to a toxic relationship between two people. When our partner denies our suffering, claims it to be an illusion or delusion, we begin to turn our frustration in onto ourselves. We begin to resent ourselves for feeling pain when the world tells us it is not real. We seek justification and explanation for our pain and we slowly begin to disregard our own thoughts on the matter of our own suffering. We then, so very ironically, place faith in feedback from those who stripped us of the ability to express ourselves and maintain an accurate and self-derived sense of self-worth.